Next, Lou Gehrig's bat, what's it worth, and the baseball great who stopped by to take a swing with it. A piece of the game, brought to you by Allstate, Chicago's own good hands. We're here at the National Sports Collectors Convention, and there are some amazingly cool items here. Some way out of our league. This may be one of them. Dave, you come to us from where? Newport Beach, California. Okay, and you have a bat here, and as soon as I saw it, it took my breath away because I looked at the name, I looked at the condition, and went, that may be the real deal. Tell us what you have. Four words, Iron Horse Lou Gehrig, game used bat. Here is a Lou Gehrig bat from the era 1936 through 1938. It's uh, 35 inches, 37 and a half uh, ounces, and uh, it's made out of ash, and it's got unbelievable patina. Today we see players, they carry 15 and 20 of them at a game, and they're all up on a rack, and one breaks, they go get it up. He hung on to his bats. Lou Gehrig was known for, if he liked a bat, he would play it. And in, in this case, you can see a lot of game use on here, some notches, and up in this area where the handle is, you can see where the tape was when he, when he there was some separation in the wood, there's some uh, the nails they used to put in the bat, and then they wrap it up. So he, you could tell he loved this bat. Gehrig is the greatest first baseman of all time. He had a 340 average and hit 493 home runs. He and the Yankees won six world titles. In this great shot, he homers to bring in Babe Ruth, who was his idol. But Gehrig's most famous record was playing in 2,130 consecutive games. When the streak ended, he learned he had ALS, soon named Lou Gehrig's disease. That I might have been given a bad break, but I've got an awful lot to live for. Thank you. Two years later, Gehrig was gone. He was 37. There's also a very worthwhile and interesting backstory yeah. that if this bat were to be sold, where the money goes. You know, like Lou Gehrig and his family, I can only imagine what their family went through when he was ill. The person, a good friend of mine who owns this bat, um, he's from Minnesota, and he's helping out a dear friend who has cancer, and his family. He didn't want to sell this bat. It took him a long time to find this bat. He's an avid collector. But being the kind of guy that he is, make a long story short, he uh, decided to sell this bat and help a friend. So what a great story so that is. he will donate the money that the sale of the bat generates to help a friend defray medical costs and family expenses. Cancer treatment for, the, for his body and for the family as well. Gehrig's consecutive game streak lasted for 56 years until Cal Ripken Jr. broke it, never missing a game for more than 16 seasons. And this, this is pretty cool, holding this, kind of getting the sensation of what he felt like swinging it. Even the pine tar patterns. You know, when you play the game enough, you're putting pine tar on here, and sometimes you have to, it's built up too much, so you have to take some of it off. So there's a process. So you're kind of connected by thinking, he did the same thing I did. And these little nicks in the end, you know, that, that makes me the happiest because uh, those were the habits that I had. And, and I, didn't, I didn't know that. And the only way to know that is to pick up his bat and to see where his marks are. And yeah, this bat was broken right here. And it looks like uh, to keep the bat going, because we're, we're very superstitious about our bats. You have a, a long hitting streak with it. Would he have played with it after he put nails in it? I think it's possible, yeah. It's, this, this, uh, this fracture is not so bad. Very dense, very heavy, good piece of wood. Yeah, I could hit a home run and BP with this thing. <laughs> Even now. Next, why this autograph could be worth a fortune. 